Hey everybody, good morning. It's Dr. Cindy Stark here coming in for my Tuesdays at 10 weekly talk where I come in and I just help you guys figure out from my 30 years of being a doctor, things that I know that can help you live the life that you really wanna live and have the health that you deserve. Want better for themselves, but they don't know how to get better for themselves. And so through decades at the bedside, I always say I've been at um, the bedsides of America in every way that you can have a bed, whether it's in a urgent care clinic, a primary care clinic, or um, the hospitals, emergency rooms, operating rooms, all of that of America. And so I have talked to people and I have seen habits that people have, things that people are doing and things that people are not doing that make them come to me versus not come to me. And so I'm here to share that with you. And uh, I've been doing these talks every week since, hey Deanne, it's good to see you and Jenny. Thank you so much for being here with me. Uh, I've been doing these talks every week since, um, I believe I started last July. And um, so coming up on, on a whole year and I normally talk about childhood trauma. I run uh, The Real Dr. Cindy. I have a, a website called therealdrcindy.com and I, I run the Soul Circle Academy. And it is a 12-week transformational health program that starts with rewiring your subconscious mind to get rid of the effects of childhood trauma. And so many of us have had childhood trauma in one way, shape, or form that we don't even, sometimes we really realize it because uh, we went through uh, traumatic events, but other times we don't even realize what all we've been through um, in the families that, that we came from. And so, uh, uh, <laughs> hey mom, it's good to have you here, and Pat and Janice. Um, but it became apparent to me after about um, nine months of doing these weekly talks that some people were, uh, even when we go in there and, and, and I've, I've put about a dozen clients through my program and we get in there and, and we literally rewire their subconscious mind and make, um, all, make them able to regulate all the negative emotions that are in our, in our brains and, and they rewire their um, belief systems and, and they believe, um, they finally believe once and for all what they're worthy of and they see the world for what it is, still, some things in their physical health has evaded them. And the top things that my clients were um, kind of sharing about on our weekly group coaching calls are problems with sleep, problems with cravings, and uh, problems with weight. So I just decided uh, this whole month, this month of June, I would do talks on physical health instead of emotional health. And, and, the, and so I will be coming back in July uh, to talking about codependency and triggers and uh, the victim, you know, triangle and and all of that. But today I want to talk to you about sleep. So uh, I, in general, I'm just going to kind of tell you how I see things and y'all may disagree with me and that's fine. I'm just here to tell you kind of how, how I see things in, in the world and in the uh, ability to acquire um, ultimate health in our, in our human body. So this is um, a human body, right? This thing is like a tent. I see it as a tent. Um, I really feel like what we are, 99% of what we are is a soul and a spirit. And we are here. God gives us this tent. Um, he gives us a soul and, it, and our bodies along with our spirit and soul are, are meant to travel a certain journey here on earth and he, he puts you down here on, in your time on earth to to either learn spiritual lessons or or um or help solve problems that uh maybe you you have struggled with in the past and uh and and if you do not uh how am i going to put this if you do not um adequately prioritize the uh, this is just how i see it um the the health of this physical body that you live in you're not able to re to live out your soul's purpose and your soul's journey to the best of your abilities so i'm not here to make everybody you know say everybody should be you know uh uh completely change their life around to something that they're not lord knows i have spent uh two decades and i'm and i'm not telling you that i've had the, that i've gotten all this figured out either okay i want you to hear me as a 52-year-old um, menopausal woman, um, just went through um, 
a, a separation and a retirement and a, a kid graduating high school and, a, and another one in college with all kinds of boyfriend problems and and I'm living in the trenches with you guys okay and the, the stuff that bombards my mind uh, and, and and my psyche and my soul is huge okay and and I feel like Americans in general you know especially that we just lived through this pandemic and um you know just all the, the the political things going on all all around the world it's just enough to make anybody go crazy so it's really great if you will prioritize your sleep okay so that you can repair and energize from all the things that just feel like it's just pervading our minds all the time but uh there there's there's um what we do and the decisions we make in our life is so important on the quality of sleep that we have so anyway with that with that getting in there um hey melissa and hey lynn uh, I, I wanted to tell you guys that i think americans sometimes have it all wrong i think that we don't prioritize uh we don't even like give sleep but we don't make it the shining star that it is i see it as the the most important thing in our life uh i know a lot of people might not May, might not think that way. They they think that maybe um, for our physical health, they might think that your food is the most important thing for your physical health, or the quality of your water, or or even the um, you know toxic thoughts or or movement. You know, a lot, I know a lot of people uh, center their whole lives around uh, lifting weights and things like that and running. And uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry if it's freezing at intervals, Janice. I can't do anything about that. Maybe try to. Um, uh, go out and come back in on your end but anyway uh there's there's so much wonderful things that happen in, in our sleep that your whole entire life uh for so if you sleep for eight hours a day uh then the rest of the 16 hours of the, of the day and and the whole trajectory of your life is going to be so great if you can uh, really realize just how much of a superstar that sleep is but i think what happens in america is that we just um we get really stressed out during the day and we go to bed it's almost like we're running this really 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 hard race you know i think if you're in like a car and you're going like 100 miles an hour and um, all day long you know and then you just go to sleep and you think you're just supposed to boop, go right to sleep and so we end up that's actually physically uh, impossible to do to go from 100 miles an hour to zero and so <clears throat> excuse me we um we start relying upon sleep medicines. And I want everyone to put it in the chat. Uh, if you take sleep medicines to sleep at night, and if you don't mind saying uh, which ones you take, uh, just tell me which ones you take. I know uh, a lot of people in my life are um, absolutely d dependent on Benadryl, you know? Um, another, a lot of my patients, a lot of my patients take Ambien and uh, Sonata. So I'm just curious, uh, do people uh, rely on some sort of a chemical to get them to sleep at night? And I want you to know that um, hopefully some of the things in this talk that I'm gonna give you today are going to encourage you that you uh, do not have to rely on, on, on sleep medicines. So uh, what, what, uh, what I think people do is they, they get relying on sleep medicines because they're going 100 miles an hour and then they just wanna stop and go to bed just immediately and because that doesn't happen, they're probably getting three hours at least of, 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 a, of low quality, low efficiency sleep during the night as their body's trying to slow down. And they don't let themselves even slow down till their bed hit their, or till their head hits the pillow in their bed. And then, so then the next day when they're, when, um, when they're really, really tired, uh, uh, of course, obviously they're gonna be really tired because they didn't get the adequate sleep and there wasn't that deep repair and inner inner working and repair going on. Then they're relying on energy drinks all day long. And they may start with coffee in the morning in their house and then they may go through Dunkin' Donuts or a Starbucks drive through on the way to work. And then um, throughout the day, I know I, I worked at a hospital system for 16 years and uh, there was everything from Monster and Red Bull energy drinks all the way, uh, there was a, uh, Two, two or three places I could go and get free Starbucks as a doctor. And I see people just, just rely not only on caffeine, but also sugar all day long. And then um, the, all they're really concerned about is it doesn't even matter how crappy their sleep was. They're just worried about how many energy drinks can I pour into my body to get through the day. And have y'all ever looked at the ingredients of of, of Monster and Red Bull. I personally don't consume those, so I, I um, except for one time. <laughs> uh, 
with Melissa, but, but you know, you, the things that are in there, they, they are not good for our bodies. And, and what it ends up doing is all that, that ex exogenous, uh, artificially, you know, external caffeine, it revs your body up and it doesn't really give you a alertness. It really just gives you a revved up body. Okay. And what that does is it makes your insides, this is how I see it, go really, really fast when you're supposed to be in a calm zen time of the day. And then what you're doing is you're setting up this in, this inflammatory, oh, okay, thank you, Melissa, I, I didn't remember that. Um, you're setting up this inflammatory cycle. Uh, it's, it's mimicking cortisol release. And if you do this long enough and you drink enough energy drinks long enough, you're gonna end up getting adrenal fatigue. And then you, you can't possibly think that you're gonna be able to go to sleep at night because each one of those energy drinks and the caffeine in them have a certain half-life. And if you drink them as late as like 4 p.m., and I know most people are drinking them as late as 4 p.m., um, then it's still in your body when you're trying to go to sleep. So you're just, you're just shooting yourself in your foot. And then the cycle starts all over again. So anyway, Okay, thank you for uh, putting a list of some um, uh, sleep medicines that, that you've taken, Jenny. Melatonin, trazodone, uh, cannabis, magnesium, and L-theanine. Okay, well, those, those uh, the only one that I would say is actually a, a drug and not a, a naturally occurring is, would be the trazodone. And yeah, a lot of my patients are on trazodone, 100 milligrams every night. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to hopefully tell you some things today that will help you not have to rely on those. Not, but now magnesium spray, especially if it's in a spray form and not the kind that you um, put in your body, um, uh, then you you will, uh, the magnesium is, is one of the most common um, uh, nutrients that we're deficient in in our body. And if you do it, do it topically, if you especially spray it um, on the skin of your stomach, I used to do 10 sprays before bedtime, but you can also do it at other points of our uh, of, of your body. And uh, Sean Stevenson uh, has a really great book out there that uh, a lot of the things I'm actually talking about in today's talk are a summary of his research. And so check that out if you want more. Um, it, uh, it's called Sleep Smarter, his book. So um, I do believe that in America we've glamorized uh, getting by with really little to no sleep. I do remember President uh, Trump would, would always talk about, I think, I think he was saying he was getting like two or three hours of sleep a night. I personally shoot for eight and, um, and I'm, and I, and I want to, uh, there's a few things that I'm, and I'm going to, after this is over. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in a spray is magnesium. It's called, uh, just look up E A S E. I'll put the link to that too. It's called ease magnesium spray. It is just, it is, is so much better absorbed, uh, biologically when you put it through your skin than through your mouth, because it doesn't have the, uh, intestinal side effects of possibly, uh, giving you diarrhea too. So that's another story for another day. But anyway, so um, first of all, I want, I want to recommend, and I'm going to list all this out in the in the synopsis after the talk is over, but to get some sleep, uh, put yourself on a sleep schedule and try to be efficient about your sleep. So try to get, if you're going to try to get eight hours of sleep, try to get it all at one time. Um, sleep from 12 to 8 or, you know, 8, eight to 4 or, you know, 10 to 6, whatever it is that you choose. Different people have uh, different times. Uh, that that are their adequate time that their um, preferred times and and efficiently get your sleep during those hours of the day don't don't just get five or six hours and then try to look for other ones uh, other hours that that you can get them throughout the day okay because um, your body uh, does best if you do it while it is um, at night and uh, I say if you want to know when you should sleep this is just me personally again I look at the trees and and the flowers and so when the sun starts going down you need to start getting yourself into what I call a sleep sanctuary mode so go ahead and and um, and th this is just my sleep routine or things that people can do uh, get into your pajamas wash your face and brush your teeth I pour myself a really big glass of water and try to from 90 minutes to two hours before you go to bed not get on your phones because what happens is there is this seeking behavior okay when you're seeking to get entertainment from your phone I mean you can get on your phone if you're listening to Hertz music or um, calming music something like that but 
Num there's two things about the phone that are bad. Number one, it's the blue light that's in the phone, okay? And, and our, we have millions of years of evolution that our human bodies were not meant to be exposed to the blue lights that are in phones and laptops and televisions. You know, these things have only been in our lives for the last couple decades, televisions, right? And then probably the last one or two decades at the most, uh, all these phones and laptops and tablets and everything else. So if you can limit your exposure to that two hours before bedtime, because what happens is it puts this blue light, very, very artificial. Our body has no idea what to do with it. And unless you have the right kind of light on your skin, there's all kinds of photoreceptors on your skin and in your eyes that if you charge those photoreceptors up during the day, and it's best for you to get natural sunlight to charge up these photoreceptors, and you need to do it at definitely during the daytime hours, that signals to your body when and how natural nighttime is coming and the sleep is coming. And so then as there's natural, beautiful, wonderful, perfectly for your nature production of melatonin, and then that's what gives you your, your adequate sleep. And it's not a chemically induced sleep with Benadryl or Ambien or Trazodone, it's one that comes from the inside of our bodies out and it's the one that is associated with repair of everything that our body goes through during the day. Anti-aging, anti-Alzheimer's, okay, cancer prevention. Uh, you, you will have your, your cancer risk go up four times with decreased sleep duration. And again, that book, Sleep Smarter, will go into all these studies. I'm just giving you a general overview because I'm just trying to really impress upon you the amazing, um, wonderful capability and possibility and potential that you can have and have an amazing, outstanding health by just mastering what you do in the morning. Get yourself out into some natural light. It's best to do 30 minutes, hey Abby, 30 minutes before 10 a.m. And then also what to do in the last two hours before sleep. And I know so many of us watch TV and look at things on our phone right before we go to sleep. So there's a way, and again, um, I can link this too, but there are special um, sun sunglasses. They look like sunglasses. They're called Swannies and they block out blue, the blue light that are in our screens that completely, if you put that blue light on our phone and on your laptop in your eyeballs right before bedtime, you will, completely obliterate any chance of, of uh, the adequate amount of melatonin being secreted, okay? So if you do that Swannies, it'll block out the blue light. There's other apps you can put on your phone and your laptop that will, uh, and I don't know them, I think they're called um, like Lux or Flux, F dot Lux, and it takes out all that blue light so that you can actually get the appropriate melatonin. So again, I was, I was talking about what, um, what sleep will do for you. So um, the cancer prevention, uh, skin health, you know, if you can ever uh, look at people's faces, I can always pretty much tell when people are um, smokers and also when they don't have good sleep because it does something to the collagen and the wrinkles in your, in your skin. And it also decreases inflammation. It helps you with your mental health. I don't think any of us have to be told that if you don't get a proper sleep that you will be a, a crab in the morning. I, I, um, Unfortunately, I did not, I, I've, I was a people pleaser in, in uh, about 15 years ago. And if there was a, a need in the hospital to cover nighttime shifts from our telephone, um, that I would, I would, t I would tell them I would do it, and then I was ended up just turning into such a, a witch with a capital B to my kids. You know, and they were in elementary school at the time, and um, and I and I just had, I just had to learn to say no because my mental health was so much more important. If you woke me up between the hours of one and four, it's just so so hard to get back to sleep. And there's all kinds of different rhythms, and I'm not getting into that today because that's beyond the scope of this talk. I'm just giving you an overview. But there's all kinds of different um, levels of REM sleep that you go in, in through and different sleep cycles. There's like different 90 minute sleep cycles and, and he goes into them in the book too if you wanna know more detail about that. But you need to at least get five of those uh, 90 minute sleep cycles. Um, anyway, the uh, adequate sleep will also help you have better relationships and, uh, and also help your immune system fu function the way that it's supposed to. And so again, um, I'm going to be talking this whole entire month of June about physical health and um, I'm going up to Chicago in a couple of weeks and um, my, my um, another lady that's on my team, Lynn, that owns uh, Love, Your, Love You First, she will be helping me deliver a talk. I believe it's a, uh, the 
the Tuesday that's like June 21st or something. And and she knows things that I've never heard of about uh, timing of different organs that get specific times of the night that different organs get repaired. And studies have shown, you know, between the hours of 1 and 3 a.m., that's when your gallbladder repairs, things like that. So she's going to be sharing with you stuff like that two Tuesdays from now. And, and so if you, if you are not getting sleep at certain times of the day, you are actually uh, really increasing your chances of having uh, problems with, with certain organs, okay? So that's, I, I think that's pretty fascinating. I've never heard of anything like that as a traditionally trained um, doctor. So what I want to encourage you guys is that if you make a decision that your health is worth it, Okay, and you are worth it. And that while while we are we are mostly 99%, I believe, soul and spirit, and we're on this journey in, in earth to, you know, carry out God's purpose for our life, we have to do it in this this thing called, you know, our bodies. And so if you make the decision that you want this body to be as healthy as it can be, I just I want you to know that I believe in you. I want you to know that you can come to me and I will support you. And um, there's there's nothing I'm more passionate about than sleep. And I, I will help you do this, okay? And it will start a cascade of events. One decision that you say that my health is important, it'll start a cascade of events that will help you have better health and longevity for the rest of your life. And not only, you know, immune system. I know, I know some people suffer with uh, infections a lot, you know, and it's not normal to, to, to get an infection, bronchitis, a sinus infection. Some people think that's normal to get that one or two or three or four or five or six times a year. And if you are getting, if you're getting sick and needing antibiotics at all, something, uh, you're, you're, you're running yourself too hard, likely. That's what I've seen. And, and there are certain things we can do that can help you get better sleep so that even if you are running yourself super, super hard during the day because you're a very busy person, we can make up for that damage that's done. We can make up for that uh, and get yourself repaired and get that immune system functioning higher again. Even, even will help you lose weight. If you adequate sleep will actually help you metabolize everything in the right way where you can actually lose lose weight a lot more easily by getting more time in bed than more time um, out on the treadmill or in the gym. So I think that's that that's also a pretty cool thing that, that I've learned um, through the years is that you can actually get, uh, get fitter by just spending more time in bed. And I personally love being at uh, getting my sleep and being in bed. So anyway, if you, um, if you, I just want to know if you if you guys ever think about do you think that you're not doing what is the best for your life and you don't know exactly why you're not doing what's best for the physical health of your body are you ever wondering kind of you know how you want to be feeling and you're not feeling that way but you continue to make decisions that are not helping you live the best life you can well there may be if you are if you are that if you say yes to that question you may be having some self-limiting beliefs that are going on in your subconscious mind and that will um hey kim kim and i went to high school together yes i'm sure that you and i are both uh tri triathletes too and i know <clears throat> that has really helped me in my um in my um in my ability to uh heal and recover from all of that so Anyway, uh, what I want what I want to encourage you is that there may be self limiting beliefs that are keeping you from preventing the life, preventing you from living the life that you that you want to live, and 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 I can help you with that to identify and uncover some self limiting beliefs and help you actually get rid of those and make them um, work for you instead of against you. So uh, to me, there is a trifecta of um, of things for adequate human health, and if you. Uh, completely negate any of these three things, you are going to be deficient in health and you, you are going to increase your chances of uh, seeing uh, doctors like me in the hospital system or in the urgent cares and primary care clinics across America. And I'd rather never see any of you guys there. Uh, one is sleep. And I, again, I'm going to talk about some things in a minute. I'm really running out of time. This happens every single time. Um, 
I'm sorry about that, Tara. Yeah, well, just keep listening to me. I'm gonna get, get into some things in just a second. So sleep, the other one is food. Upgrade your ingredients in your food. And again, I can talk about that a whole nother time because I'm running out of time. And then the other one is movement. Don't think that um, our human bodies were not given these two legs to sit around all the time. We were given two legs because we were meant to move. And so, you know, there are certain ways, and again, uh, we can get into this in, in another time, but certain ways to get movement throughout your life and throughout your day that will help you uh, get great health and great sleep. So um, sleep mastery, again, is, is not meant to be achieved through swallowing pills, but if you think that and you are uh, dependent on, on pills to get you to sleep and then energy drinks to keep you awake during the day, then I want you to know, you obviously know that putting stuff in your mouth can help. So think that swallowing food can also help and upgrade the ingredients in your food. And again, we can have a whole nother talk on that. If y'all are interested, just put comments. I, I didn't even say this, if people can write hashtag live, if you're watching this live and then type in hashtag replay, if you're catching this on the replay and answer that question to me, would y'all want me to give you a, um, everything that I know and all the decades of research that I've done on um, different uh, two things, movement and the other one would be um, the uh, quality of the ingredients in our food. Because I, I, I could definitely um, talk on that. And then also, I want you, you I want to ask you guys, if any of this is ringing true for you and you think it's resonating with striking a chord in you, share it. I'm going to make this shareable and share it on, on your private page. so that Because uh, if it's helping you, then it'll probably help other people in your circle of friends. So... Let's get in really quickly. Sorry, I've gone, I feel like I'm, I, I can go a few minutes over if need be. But if you wanna get the most immediate results in your sleep quality tonight, there's two things I want you to do and two things only. The, the, the things you can do to get the most immediate results is number one, blacken your room. Not only get blackout shades, but, but even put things down in the bottoms of your, of your, you know, your door jams if there's sunlight coming in from you know outside your doors you should not be able to see the uh your hand you know five inches in front of your face if your room is black enough okay so get the blackout shades they sell them at, at walmart sometimes they're not black enough to me and i actually put two layers of blackout shades and get your room black because that is the only thing that's going to signify to um, all of the receptors of the of the cells in your body that are responsible for making melatonin that it's time for it to be nighttime and be asleep. If you like a nightlight, sorry, turn it off. If you if you want good sleep, I'm just telling you that. And don't and don't sleep. I mean, I even turn my um you know my digital clock. You know, I turn it down so that you can't see that light in in my room. And then the other thing is to avoid screens uh, an hour and a half to two hours before bedtime. And if you must watch TV or look at your phone um, before before bedtime, just get a pair of those Swannies. Um, again, I'll link that. I think they are about sixty or seventy dollars. Um, I just, I personally just don't get on. Uh, just don't. I just try not to get on my phone um, most nights. No, you should not be sleeping with your TV on. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, and a sleep mask, there you go. Thank you, Jenny. I actually used one of those this morning because I woke up at six in the morning and I wanted to get back to sleep. So yeah, you can also just wear a sleep mask if you don't wanna blacken um, your your windows. So that's, that's perfect. And make sure to get ones that have a little nose thing that goes right there. So, cause I, I have a, uh, the shape of mine, I don't wanna say I have a big nose, but the shape of my nose, um, the light goes flooding right in through my cheeks cause my nose comes off my face so much. So get, I have to, ones with the little pads right there. But, uh, you know, um, instead of uh, watching TV or or, uh, or or getting on your phone to watch a show on Netflix, uh, other things you can do before bedtime are reading a book and, and also talking to a human or listening to music, okay? Those are, those are other things that you can do before bedtime. And uh, again, guys, that's, that's really about all that I wanted, I wanted to talk about today. And uh, I just wanna, again, impress upon you that that one part of our day, if, if handled with the respect that it needs to be handled with, can not only give you so much of a better day the next day, but it, it can also 
help your whole life run the way that you want it to run because who wants to be sick all the time and who wants to have arthritis and low back pain and you know anything whether it's migraine headaches or or stomach problems or I mean much much later in life the cancer and the heart attacks and the strokes and the Alzheimer's I mean the things that are the bread and butter of my uh, uh, that were the bread and butter of, in my full-time doctoring career it's just devastating what these kind of thing what these diseases and ailments can do um yeah but but kim you can read on your phone and just and just get those swannies or even just download that app it actually literally takes away it, it makes your screen kind of turn into like a more of a, a light orange color instead of this like bluish whitish color so yeah you you could you can fix that you can fix that uh you can read on your phone um there's there's things you can do but if you don't know about the blue light and you don't know about um the apps that you can download that gets the blue light you don't off your phone and you don't know how devastating and damaging the blue light is and then you know you're just gonna mindlessly read on your phone just like you always have and you don't even know what it's doing to your melatonin production but anyway, I just, I just, this whole talk is just to encourage you that better health is within your grasp and within your reach. And um, there are simple things you can do to make you start feeling better tonight. So anyway, guys, um, I, hope, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this has uh, served you and helped you. I know uh, I, my kids have listened to me say this so much. Uh, my, my son has um, given Swannies as presents to people before because uh, he, he just believes in it so much. And, and unfortunately, our kids during the pandemic, especially, my goodness, they were on screens like eight hours a day. And uh, and it's just, it's so abnormal for our, our bodies. I mean, our our bodies have, have not evolved to handle the stuff coming, emanating out of these devices. I mean, they are great and wonderful, but I, I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to, um, to help you guys realize ways that you can control them instead of letting them control you, these devices, okay? Because they are wonderful and irreplaceable, irreplaceable don't get me wrong. But um, there are ways that we can make them serve our health better. But anyway, it's been great talking to you guys this morning. It's good to be back. Thank you for um, uh, giving me grace to, and, and living um, my best life and having a, a great, wonderful time with my kids on vacation last week. And, um, and I'll be back next week on, on probably either uh, food or upgrading the ingredients in your food or movement or both. And then um, two weeks from now, I'll, I'll be it'll be me and Lynn giving a talk on uh, all things spiritual and just anything that i don't know we'll just probably just have a have a organic conversation and and talk about some amazing things but i love you guys i hope that you have a great wonderful day and um, keep living your best life share this if it resonates with you and i'll see you next tuesday at 10. take care